Check one, two. Good afternoon and welcome to the class of 2023's final assembly. I ask that all family silence their cell phones and all students should have their cell phones away because it is school board policy that you are not allowed to have your cell phones out. We need to stand up when the students start marching in and you will remain standing until they are sat down then we can sit. And at the end, we are to remain seated until the very last senior is out the door. Sit back and enjoy.
Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Hi, I'm Trent Holman. I'm Charlie Houghton. And I'm Trent Hutchinson. I know what you're thinking. Why is Doc Brown, Bugs Bunny, and Luigi up here talking? Well, we three goofballs are about to give the class history speech for the incredible class of 2023. Where shall we begin? How about where this class started? In the Robin's Nest and Pre-K. Most of us started at Darigo Elementary School. Those were the best days when the hardest thing we had to do was fall asleep for nap time and not fall asleep when reading a book. Pre-K taught us a lot about life and how to approach things nowadays. Like I'm still taking no thank you bites when my siblings make food. We will always remember the great times in the Robin's Nest, like when we ate green eggs and ham for the first time and we thought we were in the book. As the years moved on, we remember the key moments that make us think of this time and age. I think we all remember singing You Are My Sunshine with Mrs. Crutchfield every week in gym class. These were the years that when we learned that you wanted to be on Trenton's team in gym class because if you won the game played that day, then you would feel his wrath. Eating lunch in Nick Waugh's office will forever be a highlight to us as we shared so many laughs and Nick captured photos of us that will forever be remembered. Our class will always be associated with the scandal of banning football at recess, dodgeball in gym class, and shout out to Bodie for ruining Foursquare for everybody because he's being way too aggressive. Elementary school was a time that everyone wanted to break a bone because it was a cool thing if someone got to sign your cast. It was so cool that Jake Ellis did it four times. Everyone up here remembers looking forward to when we would get chickens in first grade and making applesauce with our apples from our annual field trip to Ricker Hill Orchard. Elementary school was a time when you met your first best friends. I was thankful to be partnered with Trent on my first day of school at Darigo in the second grade. Thankfully for that day, it led to our incredible friendship. Or when Trent and I became friends when I threw his Yankee hat in the trash can, and here we are today. We can all remember seeing OT walking up the hill at recess with Carlito on his back. A game that will forever be associated with elementary school is What Time Is It, Mr. Fox? If you remember this game, then you remember how hard it was to catch Brian because of how fast he was. Elementary school was a huge learning age for us, like when we thought Dylan had a rare disease and was going to die when his appendix burst, or when Joe actually almost died because we gave him half of our peanut butter and jelly sandwich and he was allergic to gluten. It was a great feeling to be kings of elementary school, and now we're headed to a uh, middle school. Our middle school years were uh, interesting. Elementary school was not the only age where your best friends were made, as we had to witness Kendra and Marissa's attached to the hip era, and still to this day, Lily and Rita's. Most of us remember when we heard about this sweet Mount Blue girl transferring to our school, which we were graded by athletic star, Jace Brophy. All of the substitutes can blame our parents for making them confused on which person was which, as it seemed like both Emma's, Callie's, Dylan's, Dakota's, Marissa's, and even us were all in classes together. A key memory of middle school was the smell. Which wasn't a good one. Another key memory for most of us was when Callie ran into a mailbox and fell off her bike. Then when she was in driver's ed, she backed up and hit something. And that something was a Walgreens in Rumford. <laughs> Middle school is the awkward and uncomfortable years. Like when we thought dating somebody was talking all night on the phone and then trying not to even make eye contact with them the next day at school. 
But we swore we were in love. Don't even get me started on our dances. Our middle school dances hold some of the most awkward encounters I have ever had or seen in my entire life. So let's just move to high school. We started out high school unsure of what was to come. But we all knew the next four years would be nothing short of extraordinary. That fall, a lot of us had roles on varsity sports and exceeding in the classroom. But then we got humbled quickly in our first homecoming experience. Getting trampled on the soccer field and not even coming close to winning a game of tug of war. We did have one success though, we won the banner. Winter was more of the same. One moment we will never forget is when Mr. Rowley told us to watch out for this thing called COVID one day in history class that had just started. Less than a month later, we were home, on class, and no one knew what was to come with it. The teachers were told to do no harm, so we half-assed our work and sat at home binge-watching our favorite Netflix series or playing Fortnite. The rest of the school year and summer was spent wondering if our lives would ever be the same and if we would ever get to walk down the halls of Darebo again. Sophomore year, we got told we were going to be doing a hybrid school year with masks, so our days on Zoom started as usual, waking up, getting our notes on our computer or taped against our wall for tests. We swore we were there the whole time while our cameras were off, turned off and our name was displayed across our screen. Not playing video games, taking a shower, or playing with our cats and dogs. Our days at school were a little more unusual. Walking into an empty school and putting the mask on just below our nose. Seeing some of our best friends through airplay onto a screen and the poor teachers having to take attendance for the students in class and at home. There were also no dances. Sports were a little bizarre playing football, two in touch, and sports being played with masks on. The whole time felt like just a blur. We got our first sense of normalcy when we could play our spring sports without masks. That quickly faded into summer and we started our junior year in masks again, but with normal sports and some of our biggest dreams coming through, winning a state championship. Shortly after was the night of our first prom, where Bodie Gray gave us our very own Magic Mike experience. We then watched the class of 2022 graduate and said goodbye to some of our childhood friends and knew in a shorter amount of time we'd be in that position too. Isn't it crazy that our only, that senior year is our only normal year of high school? We started the fall with the kids, same old, same old, asking Grace if we had homework. And Mason torturing teachers. We all knew where Jenna was all day. Because her voice was so loud. And then most of us didn't know Austin was in our classes until our junior year because that's when we heard his voice for the first time. Our field hockey team making their way to a regional final. And our football team losing for the second year in a row in the regional final. But our class did win homecoming with little to no competition from our underclassmen. Our basketball team repeated this winter with another state championship. June Bay qualified for nationals in debate this year and was invited to go to Kentucky. When spring came around, and let's be honest, none of us wanted to be here. We were over the early mornings and the note taking, skipping more classes than we went to. Especially Genevieve and Emma, who could always be found hiding in the office. Some of us knew we'd be here. Some of us got pushed across the finish line. We want to thank all of our fellow classmates who joined this class later on, like Eric, Jamie, Wyatt, Liam, Kylie, and Jackson, who made this class known for our greatness. We want to also thank Cody Penley and Ben Ferris for staying back to graduate with our amazing class. So here we are. The class of 2023 is about to go down in history. Hey guys, remember when we wanted to grow up? Yeah. What the hell were we thinking? <laughs> Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know us, I'm Jenna Gallant. And I'm still Trent Hutchinson. <laughs> Today we are up here representing our graduating class and hopefully giving some useful advice. Now that we're up here getting ready to leave the halls of Deergo High School, we have a few things we'd like to say before we move on. 
Before we address each class individually, my first piece of advice for you all is to one, keep a fighting to a minimum, and two, put a little less stress on our janitors because they do a lot for our school and they deserve a whole lot of respect. Imagine having the bathrooms unlocked because nothing is shoved down the toilets. That would be a nice change. Now that that's out of the way, these past four years have definitely been a learning experience and have passed quicker than most of us expected. You guys have probably been told by literally everybody that your four years of high school fly by. They are 100% correct. It was like yesterday I was walking into these halls for the first time, nervous and confused about where I was going. Now we are up here behind this podium talking to all of you. So, freshman, freshman, freshman. It only gets harder from here. Keep challenging yourself and work hard. And remember that next year, when you're a sophomore and the new freshmen show up and annoy you, that's a universal experience. Sophomores, you guys are halfway through your high school career. Yay. Yay. Now you're heading into your hardest year of high school. So be sure to start thinking about getting your stuff together, like making up your classes that you might have failed. On to the juniors. You guys are probably the class we know best, as you've always been one step right behind us. You're now going into your final year of high school. This year is most likely going to be your easiest, though it won't seem like it because senioritis is no joke. Take advantage of the light workload and use your extra time to get ahead on scholarship and college applications. And because we like nagging, here are a few more tips to make high school suck less, because it's still going to suck a little. Use your four years wisely, because these are the years to make mistakes and adventure outside of your comfort zone. Have fun, hang out with friends, join as much as you can, whether that be clubs, sports, or other organizations outside of school. Something I'm definitely going to miss is the Friday night football games and everyone going to McDonald's after. Sports really brought a lot of our class together, so try to go and show your support when you can, even if you're not into sports. I couldn't tell you a thing about football, but going to the games were some of my best memories. So if any of you were actually listening, take a minute to think about what you want your high school career to look like. Think about the memories you want to have moving forward and how you want to be remembered. Now that we are done boring you guys to death about the speech, this one is for you underclassmen. Thank you all for joining us today for our final assembly. I'm Grace Robbins. I'm Jenna Gallant. I'm Genevieve Chasen. I'm Kara Woods. And we are the senior class officers. Throughout our four years in high school, there have been five people who have provided a constant base of support for our class. We are grateful for everything our homeroom teachers have done for us, whether it be pushing us to complete our portfolios that we really didn't want to do, or having an open door and a kind listening ear. Thank you, Mr. Fazette, Ms. Edwards, Ms. Doherty, Mr. Karcher, and Ms. Fletcher. There's literally quite nothing that Mr. Carvis cannot do. He has so many jobs and even took on an additional role as our senior choir director this week. As much as we joke with him, we are so grateful that he came to Dergo while we are here. Thank you. We love you, Mr. Carvis. Ms. Doyen has been so amazing to us. She is so kind and supportive 
of us and the rest of the student body. She's always a smiling face in the morning and is always willing to listen to our senioritis filled complaints. Thank you, Ms. Doyen. Moving on. Ms. Doherty and Mr. Keene have been the best this week. They've ensured all of our events go smoothly, even when everyone is complaining about marching one more time. Thank you both for putting up with us. This week has truly been amazing, and we can't thank you enough. Next, we'd like to thank the Robins. As many of you know, the Robins House was our base for homecoming for the three years we were able to build floats. I'm sure there are paint spots, excess cardboard, and glue sticks everywhere in that garage. <laughs> However, one of the more memorable moments was when my dad, Shane Gallant, um, <laughs> our truck driver for every year, was backing in his flatbed and cut the corner of the driveway just a little too close and took out their mailbox. Since then, we've found a way to put the mailbox on our flow every single year. We've had everybody sign this mailbox, and today we're giving it back as a symbol of our thanks to the Robins for all the memories made during those weeks. I'll let him sit down. <laughs> In addition to being one of our homeroom teachers, Ms. Edwards has also served as our class advisor for these past four years. She has dedicated so much time and energy to ensuring that our class has had fun while being successful. She has done so much for us over the years across homecomings, fundraisers, and prom, and we are so grateful to you. Thank you so much, Ms. Edwards.
You never look back, but you never forget All the ones who love you in the place you left I hope you always forget and you never regret And you help somebody every chance you get Oh, you find God's grace in every mistake And always give more than you take But more than anything Yeah, more than anything My wish for you Is that this life becomes All that you want it to Your dreams stay big Your money stay small You never need to carry more than you can hold And while you're out there getting where you're getting to I hope you know somebody loves you And wants to say thanks to Yeah, this is my wish My wish for you is that this life becomes all
Test, test. Can you hear me now? Okay. Kind of what I heard on Zoom about two years ago a lot of the time, and I think they were just messing with me and they could hear me the whole time, right? Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here today as we continue to honor our graduating class of 2023. My name is Nick Carvis, and I'm the Assistant Principal and Athletic Director here at Dirigo High School. It is an honor to be standing here today to present several awards to these very dedicated, distinguished, and deserving individuals. Before I get into the awards, I wanted to take a moment to address the class of 2023. And as you can tell by my speech, I got extremely far. It's pretty blank between that middle part. That's where my speech was supposed to go, because uh, pretty much every time I came to it, it was hard. So what I'm gonna focus on is the things that they irritated me about in the classroom. <laughs> Let's begin. So, I get hired about three years ago to be their uh, math teacher. I had many of them in my classes. Um, I still remember one day that we were remote, and all of a sudden, I think it was advanced geometry, I see Bodie Gray's Zoom pop up, and it's the dark screen with his name, and then all of a sudden there's this blue sky, I'm thinking, okay, he's outside, and then an elf comes into it. You remember this, Bodie? Okay. So, not only was he in an elf costume, he was on his roof. So I'm sitting here going, I just got this job and I'm about to lose that. Not sure if I ever reported that. I don't think I ever did. Nope, I did not. Sorry about that. Uh, he's okay. Um, I don't think you were, you, you weren't close to falling at any point, were you? Yeah, see, you were safe. Yeah, you were good. Yeah. Um, this class is pretty remarkable in their, in their accomplishments in the classroom and in athletics. Um, it's hard to look at such a good class and try to come up with a speech to tell them how much that they actually had an impact on this community, staff, school, and individual people. Because uh, they all have different aspects that they basically brought uh, to kind of come up with this mixing pot of a perfect class. And they had an impact on me because I'm really sorry. Before, before coming to Maine, uh, I made the decision to not go into teaching. And then I came here. I, lived in, I still live in Scarborough. I applied for this job, got it. And people were like, why are you driving? This class behind me is the reason, along with the other students in this building and across the entire district and the staff and everything because I feel like it's a home with all my family in Michigan. It is true that you guys will make an impact On the world. I gotta keep thinking about Bodie in that elf costume. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> That's weird, it works. <laughs> weird. <laughs> you guys will make an impact on the world, you whatever you guys decide. On the world, and you guys I know decide. that you can, as long as you put, your, you mind you can, as as you put your mind to it, because we saw it every day. You had COVID interrupt your educational, your athletics, everything about your life was disrupted. And you guys came on top. You came on top. It's incredible to see all of your smiles, even as the interim music teacher, which I will never do full time, by the way, seeing their smiling faces, and I'm pretty sure it was because of the expressions I was probably making, which I'm glad you could not see. Um, I'm glad that they were enjoying themselves because that's the epitome of this class. They are wonderful and I can't say anything else or I'm just gonna keep going. So if you want more tears, that's fine. You're just gonna have to come see me on an individual basis. That's where I'm gonna leave it. 
So I want to put our hands together for the class of 2023. And I am going to, at this time, invite Miss Kathy Peters up so that we can go ahead and get started with the Derek Peters Memorial Wrestling Award. I've been given this award for a lot of years. Today it dawned on me as I was emotionally watching the video of the kids starting school and through their years thinking, my God, my son graduated 30 years ago. 30 years. What I want to tell you about Derek was Derek loved wrestling. And guess what? As his mother, I hated it. I hated every single thing about wrestling except for the fact that my son loved it. He tortured his sisters with it. I went to meets and I went like this. And I would not watch if I thought he was going to even remotely get in a terrible position. So with this being said, Derek's award is about the spirit. He was a good wrestler. He was not the top wrestler, but it wasn't for lack of effort. He loved wrestling. And that's what this war award is all about. It's for the person who gives it their all, who shows up and just loves what they do, despite the fact that their mother's going, oh God, oh God, oh God. It's not a fun thing to watch. I did not get into it like some mothers did. So this year's award must go to that person who must go to that person to me before. Okay. So the individual receiving this award so was dedicated and determined from the beginning to the end of the season. That's what Derek was. They never quit during praxis, practice, exhibition, or match. And when they were involved in matches, they put everything out on the mat that they possibly could. Perfect. They always helped with setting up for practices and matches and would always make sure to see that everything was taken care of. Perfect. Everyone who witnessed his dedication and love for wrestling were impressed. Even the father of the state of Maine's best 152, Derek wrestled 152. Weight class asked the coaching staff to be introduced to this individual and their family to share their impressed notions of his award, this, of this award recipient. I'm proud to say that this year's Derek Peters Memorial Wrestling Award goes to Hanner Verdeen. And if Tanner's anything like Derek, when he's out of this school, they'll come back and have to coach and help and do those things because it's just the way it is. Thank you very much. Now we're going to present the Craig Mandrovin Memorial Award. Craig is remembered for being fun, sweet, and extremely funny. The sport of football was his passion while growing up, and when he became a high school football player, his love of the sport grew exponentially. The coaching staff of the youth football team at the time referred to him as the animal that he, that he participated within until sixth grade. He was great at football, and what it made it even better was that he loved playing. From a young age, Craig would even be found reading the sports section in the newspaper. However, upon entering Deerigo High School, there wasn't a football team that Craig could be a part of. Craig's love and passion for football didn't stop him from trying to get onto the Mountain Valley football team. However, they wouldn't even consider it. Then Mount Blue had a connection to Craig and wanted him to come to their school and play football for them. Craig was left with a tough decision. Go play the sport he loved or stay with his friends. Craig's heart was at Deergo with his friends, so he decided not to go. Craig went on to play soccer during his freshman, sophomore, and junior year. 
The summer prior to his senior year, Craig had the opportunity to play at Bates College football camp. If you were watching him during that summer, you would have known that he had taken a few, you would not have known that he had taken a few years off between playing. As the beginning of Craig's senior year approached, Dirigo brought back football. Craig immediately joined the team. His senior year, Craig was the captain of his football, basketball, and baseball teams. He played hard, was dedicated, and loved all of his teams. He was a leader and brought everyone together. In 2004, Craig graduated and went on to attend Southern Maine Community College for a year, but then returned home to work at Irving's. While working at Irving's, he made a new plan to attend Huston University, and in the winter of 2005, he began getting all of his transcripts and application ready to apply. He was going to play football for them, and he couldn't have been happier. Five days after his 20th birthday, February 3rd, 2006, he was on his way home from getting a stereo system put in his Jeep when he hit a black patch of black ice and veered off the road. Today at that same spot, you can see a beautiful wooden cross memorial made by one of his best friends, Jeremy Pratt. The friendships that he created on and off the field are cherished still to this day. He was an amazing friend, son, and big brother. The Craig Langevin Memorial Award is presented to an athlete who takes great pride in being a Deergo Cougar. This student athlete is respected and liked by his teammates, a good friend, a leader, and a talented football player. This year's recipient is just that. In talking with the coaching staff, an endless amount of qualities was discussed regarding this individual. They are respected and well-liked by their teammates, staff, and community members. This individual is a good friend, is a leader, and it is an extremely talented football player. It is a true honor to announce that this year's Craig Langevin Memorial Award goes to Trent Holman. Now we're gonna present the Jeff Norris Memorial Basketball Award. Jeff Norris was a tall, outstanding basketball player who played under Coach Dick Beatty in the early 1970s. Jeff attended Deergo for two years as he transferred to Deergo as a junior. Jeff was a standout offensive player and a great rebounder. According to Mr. Marshall, who was a close friend of Jeff's, Jeff ended up with approximately 800 points in the two years that he was at Deergo. He also set a record of 22 rebounds in one game against Forest Hills. In the 71 to 72 season, the Deergo High School basketball team went 15 and three, and Jeff was instrumental in that successful season. Jeff was an adventurous guy who loved the outdoors. His family owned sporting camps, and Jeff always went on their annual fishing, fishing trip in Canada. In 1997, on one of those fishing expeditions, Jeff was involved in a plane crash and tragically passed away. The Jeff Norris Memorial Basketball Award was created to recognize both an outstanding female and male basketball player in memory of Mr. Norris. The recipients this year have shown dedication, love, and passion each day on the court. They have been able to perform exceptionally and are role models for those that are younger within the basketball programs. This year, I am proud to announce that the female recipient is Jace Brophy. And now, I am proud to announce that the male recipient is Charlie Houghton. Charlie Houghton. Now we're gonna go on to the Golden D Awards. And please, as you get these, please stand off to the left so that we can take a picture of all of you together. The Golden D Award is presented to seniors who have participated in a sport every season of their high school career. Although that these seniors had COVID restrictions to follow, they always kept their heads held high and persevered during their high school career. Furthermore, Golden D Award winners might have favorite athletic programs, but they are not athletes that are willing to be one-dimensional. Every season they play and contribute greatly to their teams. And now I am proud to announce the following recipients of the Golden D Award. Robert Serpernet. <laughs> Ashley 
Abigail Terrio. <laughs> Olivia Ellis. <laughs> Kelly Arrington. <laughs> Grace Robbins. Charlie Houghton. <laughs> Bodie Gray. <laughs> Eric Richard. <laughs> Trent Holman. <laughs> Dakota Tompkins. Trenton Hutchinson. Brian Bocage. Austin Adams. Savannah Williams. And Jace Brophy. This is a big group. This is a big group. Congratulations again to our Golden D 2023 recipients. All right, you can take a seat. I think Art got one, hopefully. Sorry, Art. Now I'm going to present the Dennis Brown Memorial Iron Athlete Award. Dennis Brown loved sports of all kinds. Dennis volunteered as a coach at different schools in the River Valley area and coached a number of different athletic programs. Dennis faced many obstacles, but he didn't allow these obstacles to stop him from coaching and being a part of athletic programs. Dennis was dedicated to working with athletes and spent much of his life as a volunteer assistant coach. The Dennis Brown Memorial Iron Athlete Award is given to an athlete each year who participates in sports despite facing obstacles. This year, the recipient of the Dennis Brown Memorial Iron Athlete Award is a student athlete that leaves everything out on the playing surface, despite the obstacles and challenges that this individual has had to overcome, including injuries. I have always seen this individual push themselves to their fullest potential. I will always remember hearing the following quote during the course of the spring season from an opposing coaching staff. He, sti he stole. He's gone. It is a true honor to present this year's Dennis Brown Memorial Iron Athlete Award to Trenton Hutchinson. Now we're gonna present the Robert Masterman Award. Robert Masterman was a football coach from Deerigo who passed away in an accident in the spring of 1969. Robert Masterman was an avid skier and overall athlete. He loved sports of all kinds. At the time, Deerigo High School was a very new school and Robert Masterman was a teacher and coach who inspired the student athletes of Deerigo High School to strive to be excellent. The Robert Masterman Award is given to a female and male who are named the most outstanding athletes of the year. They have had a great impact on every team that they have played on and they have pushed themselves to be outstanding athletes. It has been a true honor and privilege to witness all that they have left on the playing surface during the course of the two past years as the athletic director. I am proud to announce that this year's female recipient of the Robert Masterman Athlete of the Year Award is Jace Brophy. Brophy. And now I am proud to announce that the males, the, this year's male recipient of the Robert Masterman Athlete of the Year Award is Trenton Hutchinson.
Now I'm going to present the Rick Dunley Scholar Athlete Award. Rick was a scholar as well as a remarkable athlete. Bruce Thompson said that Rick took calculus while in attendance at Deergo High School and went on to college and took calculus as well. Rick ran cross country and was an individual cross country state champ. While Rick was running, Deergo also won three cross country state championships. Rick also excelled as a basketball and baseball player. He was the captain of an excellent basketball team that played for the MVC championship. In the MVC championship game with time running down, Rick got an offensive rebound and was fouled. Rick missed the front end of his one and one and the opportunity to tie the game. After the game, Mr. Marshall remembers Rick's coach being asked a by a reporter if he was upset about Rick missing the foul shot. The coach replied, anyone can miss a free throw. Rick was the only player in this gym who could have gotten that rebound. Rick was an athlete that made the difference in games and Rick was a scholar in the classroom. This year's recipient of the Rick Dunley Scholar Athlete Award has stood out both in the classroom and on the athletic playing surfaces. If there was a definition for student athlete, I would propose that we take a picture of this athlete and just post it right next to that. I have seen this individual have passion within the classroom so that they are able to grasp and digest as much inf information as they possibly can. It has been an honor to be able to have this student within my own classroom two years ago here at Dirigo High School in math. The thirst for knowledge that this individual possesses is one that will drive their path moving forward upon graduation. I have also witnessed this individual participate in athletic programs and provide everything they possibly can to all the team's growth and progress. This individual is a role model and has set goals for the younger student athletes to strive to be similar to this student athlete. It is a true honor to present this year's Rick Dunley Scholar Athlete Award to Grace Robbins. Grace Robbins. Now I'm gonna do the Susan Holmes Community Service Award. Many of you remember Susan Holmes. Susie was always kind and friendly and extremely welcoming to those entering the Deergo community. Susan Holmes was a member of our Deergo athletes community that always was looking out for everyone else. If boosters needed someone to come into the chow house, she was the first to volunteer. She was one of the biggest Deergo Athletics fans, and she encouraged all of our student athletes to be the best that they possibly could be. The Susan Holmes Community Service Award is presented to someone who values their community and demonstrates this value with their actions. The individual receiving this award has gone above and beyond for their community, even quietly, in which many wouldn't have been able to recognize. Over the past couple of years, I've realized how much that this individual has done for their family, their teams, other students, and their community. They are always thinking of ways to help others and have been, they have always wanted to strive to be a great overall person. I know that this person is going to be able to make a difference within the world around them in the future as they have made a difference on those that are around them today. This person has always made sure that I'm doing my own job correctly during the course of all the seasons and does it with a smile on their face. They push themselves during all three seasons and have become a voice of reason within a team, school, and community. It is without a doubt a true honor and pleasure that I present the Susan Holmes Community Service Award to Austin Adams. Austin Adams. And now, at this time, I would like to invite Art Chamberlain to present the Spirit of Deergo Award. Oh, this doesn't get any easier. Uh, I would first like to thank all of the parents and grandparents and community members for all of the search of presented. Uh, I was further and further away from knowing the kids as well as I did when I was working. And every year it's harder for me to help with the selection. So I leave the selection up to whoever, I'm not even sure who does it. I make some suggestions and it was very rewarding to, to find out yesterday 
that uh, my top choice is the recipient. Thank you for writing these, Nick, but I think I've said enough. It's a great honor and pleasure to call down the Spirit of Dergo Award, Trent Holman. <laughs> I'm not quite done. You know, I take a lot of pictures. And one of my favorite images out of the last two or three basketball seasons is this fall, uh, winter rather, at Mountain Valley. Uh, boys had come from behind a little bit, if I recall, near the end of the game. And coming off for a timeout, this guy, three feet off the floor, doing his classic. Let's go! I just want to echo what Art was saying, uh, now that I have my tears rolled back just for a little bit longer. Um, the reason why these kids are the way that they are and why they're such a good group is because of all of you. The community, the staff here, the staff going all the way down to elementary school, we know how much effort is put in outside of these walls. And I can't tell you, it was a mind-blowing experience to see the amount of time and patience that all of you parents and families have to put into athletics to make sure that they're getting what they need. And I just wanna thank you for all of that. I wanna thank the boosters for everything that you always do for athletics to make this possible. I wanna thank Jay, I don't know if Jay's here. Jay and Aaron making the fields look phenomenal. It's, and everybody else involved because we get compliments all the time. The reason why we get the compliments is because of the support of the community. And we couldn't do it with any, without any of you. And I appreciate all the support that you have provided to them. So thank you and congratulations again to the class of 2023. At this time, I need to have um, Darago staff come up to give out the classroom awards. All right, so I was unable to give my awards for April recently, so these are for my April students. Uh, both of them are in my Algebra One classes. And one of them is Autumn Knox. And the other is Molly Gary. Hi, I'm Mr. Arujo. I have uh, three awards today. One to Callie Gordon, Dylan Ellis, and Connor Hallosey. For the month of May in anatomy and physiology, Morgan Woods. For May for biology, I have Cami Wright and Diana Kerr. For the month of May for foundations of science, I have Noah Downs. And for geometry, I have Rayleigh Virgin. For the month of May, for English, I have Riley Knowlton. I have two for May. I have Kendra Domina and Adrian Wallace.
For the month of May, I have two, Jackson Libby and Caden Schedule, both in English 9. For 20th Century America, Megan Spaulding. All right. I have three for the month away to give away. For Spanish one to Sunny Pelletier. For Spanish two to Alyssa Ellis. And for Spanish three to Emily Woods. I also have the privilege to award the May Student of the Month. So, the Student of the Month for the month of May has been described by the staff as, I'll wait till they sit, as as respectful, nice, helpful, someone who pitches in when needed, who helps the class, who is ready to put in the work to be successful, is her own person, is determined to exceed, someone who takes harder classes to stay with a peer group that lifts her up and encourages her, she chooses good friends. Someone who has challenged herself through high school, who works hard, who could have taken a regular level course load but took advanced instead, someone who perseveres through difficult tasks, who is super quiet, but present, who quietly leads by example, who has good grades enough to be inducted into National Honor Society, is a three-sport athlete in field hockey, basketball, and softball, and has plans to study criminal justice at Thomas College. The May Student of the Month is Callie Arrington. Okay, and other staff who have June uh, Classroom Awards to give out, come on up. June Classroom Awards, come on. <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna kick this one off because my June Student uh, Classroom Award also goes to Callie Arrington. For Semester Chemistry, Megan Spaulding. And for Semester Chemistry, I have two classes, Olivia Ellis. For Biology, I have Andrew Weiskup and Emily Woods. Advanced Foundations of Science, I have Ella Cody. And for Advanced Geometry, I have Layla Merrill. Well, I'll start mine off, because for Advanced English 10, I also had Layla Merrill. And then for Regular English 10, Hunter Packard. I have two for the month of June. I have Joey Scott. And Skylar O'Connor.
All right, Ms. Edwards and I are presenting the June Student of the Month. Our June Student of the Month has been described as involved in their class and in school activities such as homecoming, well-liked by their classmates, has a good sense of humor, is loyal and humble, is studious, cares about doing well, is focused and motivated, has an incredible work ethic, an all-around good kid. Is supportive of others, has been described as wholesome, is an elite athlete who plays soccer, basketball, baseball, gives his all in the classroom and on the court and field, loves his younger siblings, finds inspiration in his family, worked hard to be where he is, doesn't speak negatively, nicest person, fantastic human. Please join us in recognizing our Dirigo High School June Student of the Month, Trenton Hutchinson. <laughs> the badges. I can I can do this. I'll do the speech if you want to do the right. It's me again. It's going to be me for a few minutes. All right. Our next award is the Main Career Exploration Badge. The Main Career Exploration Badge is an opportunity for all Maine high school students to participate in 40 hours of meaningful work experiences facilitated through an intentionally designed exploration and reflection process. Students complete a minimum of 40 hours of employer engagement experiences coupled with online modules to set goals, document their employer engagement experiences, and plan for their futures. Upon completion, students receive a micro-credential to use on their resumes and an academic award of $500. I am proud to introduce the Dirigo students who have so far completed their main career exploration badges. Robert Colin Haas. Alyssa McLean. Ryan Wing. Aiden Lowe. And Dustin Capone. All right, and this is, whoops. you can, yeah, clap, clap. <laughs> um, and this is the last award you hear from me, guys. Um, so this is an award from Oxford Federal Credit Union. It's a scholarship for a JMG student at Dirigo High School. Um, one senior JMG student was selected to win the scholarship, and this year's recipient is Abigail Terrio. And I'm going to present the DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution Citizen, Good Citizenship Award. It was created in 1934, is intended to encourage and reward the qualities of good citizenship. The award recognizes and rewards individuals who possess the qualities of dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism, patriotism in their homes, schools, and communities. These students are selected by their teachers and peers because they demonstrate these qualities to an outstanding degree. Our 2023 recipient is involved in many extracurricular activities, including theater, culture club, math team, swim team, student council, and debate. She also participates in Model UN, which is the simulation of the United Nations General Assembly in which students perform an ambassador role while debating global issues. She prepares documents on behalf of her assigned country and discusses compromises with other countries. This year's winner is June Bay Chen.
And now I would like to invite the DHS office staff up to join me here at the podium because we will be giving out the office award. The office award is a joint effort as we determine which student has supported the office all four years of their high school career. This year we debated between two students, Genevieve Chasson and Emma Hebert. Both were tremendously helpful to all of us in the office. Genevieve is a lifesaver and answers the phone, takes messages, and completes a variety of tasks that help us get through some crazy times. Emma willingly takes on every task we ask of her and often asks for more things to do, even on days she doesn't even really need to be at school. From folding programs to running packages to classes and returning wayward students to class. Thank you so much for that. Well, let's be clear, there's one thing she left undone. I have yet to see a life-size knit elephant, which I've been asking for for quite some time. After much deep and heartfelt consideration, we determined that the annual office award goes to both Emma and Genevieve. They have brought much joy to the office along with the work they happily take on. Thank you both and congratulations. Next is the Principal's Award. The Principal's Award is presented in more than 100 Maine public and private high schools. The award, sponsored by the Maine Principals Association, is given in recognition of a high school senior's academic achievement and citizenship. Grace Robbins of Dixfield has been selected to receive the 2023 Principal's Award for Darago High School. Grace is the daughter of Scott and Jessica Robbins. Throughout her years at Darago High School, Grace has distinguished herself in the classroom, on the field and court, and as a leader in the school and community. Grace serves as president of her class and is a member of the National Honor Society. Grace has been a three-season athlete throughout her four years at Darago High School, playing field hockey, basketball, and softball. Grace has opted to take advanced classes and early college classes while at Darago High School. Grace very much deserves this recognition. Her GPA is 99, with a weighted GPA of 102.77 crowning her our 2023 valedictorian. I am proud to acknowledge Grace Robbins as the 2023 Darago High School Principal's Award recipient. So now, people have been waiting for this for a while. They've been asking me who won the trifolds. So I'm excited that I'm the one that gets to announce that this year. Whew. I hope everyone had a chance to see them. They were really amazing. I was really proud to walk around and see what our students had accomplished this year. I first want to acknowledge the six exhibits that received a perfect score of 4.0 from the judges. Could you please stand as I call your name? June Bay Chen, <laughs> Callie Gordon, Bodie Gray, Grace Robbins, and Trent Holman. Yeah. Congratulations for earning 4.0 on your trifold. And you may sit back down. The People's Choice Award is chosen by the student body. Juniors, sophomores, and freshmen vote for their favorite display. This year's People's Choice Award goes to Austin Adams. The Best in Show Award is chosen by staff members, community members, and board members. We actually had a tie for the Best in Show Award this year. So please hold your, your applause until both of them have been announced. I'm super excited about this. <laughs> like more excited than normal about things. So first person who won Best in Show Award is Trent Holman. Well, go ahead and cheer for him. It's worth it, come on. I'm going to say a little bit about the second one. I'm going to say a little bit about 
because literally I came in and I, when I saw the trifold, I was like, did you really make this? And this person looked at me and said, yes, yes I did. And I'm like, really? Are you sure your mom and sister didn't do this? And he assures me that he did it on his own and he got recognized by the adults in the building on that day. And Dylan Ellis, I am proud to say you also won Best in Show. That's it for me. Each year since 1933, participating schools have nominated one outstanding junior <clears throat> to receive the Bausch and Loam Honorary Science Award. Winners of the award are automatically eligible to be considered for the Bausch and Loam Science Award at the University of Rochester. The scholarship provides $6,000 per year, totaling $24,000 over four years. The Bausch and Loam Honorary Science Award and Scholarship are indicative of Rochester's and Bausch and Loam's commitment to scientific study. This year's inductee demonstrates exceptional intelligence and academic excellence in the sciences, specifically advanced chemistry. It is my pleasure to announce Dergo's newest Bausch and Loam Honorary Science Award winner, Isaiah Campbell. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Olaf Johnson, and most of you know me as one of the math teachers here, uh, but today I'm here as the future debate coach here at Durgo. Uh, as such, it is my privilege and honor to award a graduation cord to someone who came to our humble Durgo speech and debate team last year and has proven to be worthy of some attention. But first, a little background. The National Speech and Debate Association, or NSDA, is who I'm ultimately representing here today. Since 1925, it has been a nationally recognized honor society, supporting speech and debate activities across the country, as well as around the world. This prestigious organization has many alumni who have gone on to be successful as actors and directors, notable congressmen, and senators, savvy entrepreneurs and CEOs, skillful admirals and generals, scholars, Supreme Court justices, and even a former president or two. Durgo has been involved in this distinctive honor society for about 20 years. And on a side note, that is largely in part to Mr. Bradley Conant. Thank you. We can also brag about our own Durgo and SDA alumni who are now lawyers, army officers, professors, stage directors, teachers, political insiders, and much, much more. At this time, I ask that Junbei Chen please come up and join me. To join the NSDA's Honor Society, a student must attend up to a dozen Saturday tournaments per year and earn merit points through competition. These points are earned from competitive rounds, usually only one to five points at a time. In her short two-year tenure on the team, Junpei has achieved over 225 points. <laughs> yeah more than enough to qualify for the Honor Society. Now on top of that, here at Durgo, many years ago, before most of you were born in fact, uh, it was stipulated that a candidate must compete at the NSDA national qualifiers during their senior year to receive this scarlet and silver cord. Junbei not only competed at the qualifiers this year, fulfilling her obligation to earn this cord, but went on to qualify and then compete on the national stage at Louisville, Kentucky, representing our humble little school from the woods of Western Maine. June Bay Chen. Good 
Junbei Chen, it is my sincere privilege to present this honor cord to you on behalf of Dergo High School and the National Speech and Debate Association Honor Society. And one final note for any underclassmen that may be paying attention, we have an opening. We have several, in fact. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Libby. And I'm Logan. And we are honored to be here today to celebrate this momentous occasion with you all. We are here to say our final farewell to the best group of seniors. Besides the future senior class of 2024. Graduates, congratula congratulations on reaching this milestone. You all should be proud of yourselves for all that you have accomplished. As you move on to the next phase of your lives, remember that this is just the beginning. You have worked hard to get to this point, but there is still much more to do. You will face new challenges and opportunities, and it is just up to you to make the most of them. Second, don't be afraid to take risks. Life is full of uncertainty, and you never know what might happen. Embrace the unknown and be willing to take chances. You might fail, but you also might succeed beyond your wildest dreams. Don't let fear hold you back from achieving your goals. Take that final shot, and you may just come back a state champion. Finally, enjoy the journey. Life is short, and it is essential to savor every moment. Learn from your failures. Celebrate your successes, whether that's a good grade on a test or passing a class. Most importantly, appreciate the people and experiences that make life worth living. In conclusion, we want to congratulate you once again on your graduation. You have accomplished something significant, and the world is waiting for you. Remember to keep learning, keep growing, and keep pushing yourself to be the best you can be. Believe in yourself, take risk, and enjoy the journey. Good luck and congratulations. We will miss all of you. And if you ever happen to need another shoelace, Charlie, I'll still be here next year. This is an address to the underclassmen here. Um, we're a little early, so when these seniors leave, after they've exited, you are to go to your activity period. What's worth the prize is always worth the 
Today.